Today we're looking at Photoshop's Colorize Neural Filter. It is mind-blowing. Check it out. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yes, we're looking at the Colorize uh, Neural Filter found in Photoshop today. It's really cool. You can use it to take black and white images and change them into color images, you know, like old photographs and things like that. You can use it to stylize images and you can also use it to correct color and color images. Now, I have four different examples and I'm really excited to show this Colorize Filter to you. So let's get started. By the way, I'm linking all these images in the uh, description below this video so you can download these and follow along with me. Now, obviously, this is a color image and we need it to be black and white. Now, I'm going to convert it to black and white, but, you know, I could start out with any black and white image. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to convert these to black and white. And I'm going to do all these images the same way. Okay, so I'm going to show you one time and then for the next images... I'm not going to duplicate that process to save time. So here's what I've done. I went down to the adjustment layers and grabbed a gradient map. And I just chose the uh, black to white swatch right here. Okay. And that, well, that's inverting it. Sorry. This one, actually, I get those backwards. You get one that's inverted and one that's not inverted. So you want to use this one with the black on the left and the white on the right. Okay, and that just converts your image to black and white. And it's just that simple. And it gives you a nice high contrast black and white. And I love doing my black and whites this way. In order to send this into the neural filter, I need a actual pixel layer, not an adjustment layer. So I'm going to convert this over. I'm going to stamp these layers together. I'm going to use this TK Action. The shortcut for that is Shift, Option, Command, or Control, E. And now, everyone, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's come up here to Filter and come to Neural Filters right here. Click that. That'll launch our Neural Filters. Now, you'll see we have some featured Neural Filters in here. There's a wait list showing you things that they're planning on making. So we got some cool stuff coming. Let's go to All Filters here. So we have Featured and we have Beta. Now this uh, filter colorizes in the Beta and it's right here. And to fire it up, all we need to do, and if we hover over this, I should say, you can get a little splash screen comes up there and says, Colorize helps with recolorization of black and white photographs. Okay, and they're showing like an old photograph, showing you what you can do. So if you've got some old photographs, this is, this is what you want if you want to colorize them. So let's go ahead and click this little toggle here. Now, you'll notice this little icon up here. This happened pretty quick. Sometimes it takes a little longer. It's actually going up to the cloud in doing this uh, AI interpretation of this image here. And look at that. Right out of the gate, that looks really good. Now, we have a bunch of different adjustments here. Uh, like, you know, you can shift the colors to red or cyan, blue, yellow, magenta, green. So we'll play with that a little bit later. We don't have to on this one. And uh, we have this focus color. Some of these things I haven't quite figured everything out yet. I'm still playing with this. I'm not going to go into real extreme detail today, but enough to show you how this works. And it's pretty simple to use, okay? And if you have color artifacts, you can reduce them with this slider right here, okay? And there's even some noise reduction in here if you need it, okay? But saturation, I think this image needs a little more saturation. So I'm just going to bump the slider to the right a little bit. And give it just that little extra saturation, maybe just a tiny wee bit more. I want my that tiger to really kind of look good. But uh, now remember, we use the gradient map on this to make the black and white conversion, which the gradient map gives you a little extra contrast, which is really why I like it. But we'll compare this to the original color image at the end, and you may find some interesting results there when we go back out of here. Now, there's some other things we can do in here, and I'll show you that later, too, like profile. They have a bunch of different profiles. Think of this area as more like uh, stylizing an image. Like, you don't have to necessarily uh, take a black and white image into here to be colorized. You can take a color image and use, you know, these retro styles here, which is really nice. And I'll show you that in a little bit. And then you have profile intensity you can adjust. But anyway, there's my colorized image, one click, and I gave it a little extra saturation. I'm gonna click OK, and that'll send us back over to the layers in Photoshop. And here's my layer right here. Now, this is nice. If I, I'm just gonna option click. Here's the original image, it looked like that. Kinda, kind of like, uh, what would you say? Kinda like faded looking and not a lot of high contrast to it. But after making this um, black and white conversion here, now uh, it looks like this after the gradient map. So let's compare this to this. Which one do you like better? 
for me, I like this one. Let let me know in the comment section below what you think. Now, notice, the, I'm glad I did this. Notice you see some little artifact-y things in here and little things. You're actually seeing what the image looks like as it comes out. And it doesn't necessarily hit all the areas, if that makes sense. Like, let me zoom in so you can really see what I'm talking about. Like you see in here, okay? But when that's combined with the image underneath it, the two layers meld together and you won't see any gaps or any artifacts. If I wanted, to, and this is important, if I wanted to send this into another program like, uh, you know, like Topaz Studio 2 or Luminar AI or the Nick Collection, whatever, I would have to do another stamp, like I'd have to pull all these layers together. And I'm going to use this TK action again just to pull all those layers together. All right. And now I could uh, send that into anything I want. And now we'll notice when I zoom into it that you don't see any any gaps or things like that. But that's just the way uh, the colorized filter is working. So very important. If you're going to send it into other uh, plugins or whatever, you definitely want to stamp that layer. Very important. Don't forget that one. As a side note, I do find it rather fascinating that I could uh, have this image and turn it into a black and white image with a gradient map and have it look like this. I mean, to me, it looks better. So pretty cool. So something to keep in the back of your mind. Let's move on to the next image. It's a portrait. And I've already did the black and white conversion. Here's what it originally looks like here. So remember that. And we'll compare it at the end after I make the colorized version. Now remember, you say, no, Dave, why are you turning these into black and white? They're color images to begin with. I'm just showing you how this can work. So remember, you can take old photographs and turn them into color images. But I'm just doing this so we can compare the difference between the original and the colorized version. Because, again, sometimes they come out actually looking better, as you'll see on this one here. So let's go ahead and take this into the neural filter. And we'll go right to colorize. Now you'll notice it puts a blue box around it and it's picking smart portrait because this neural filters section is smart enough to know if you have a portrait or not. And it's thinking you may want to use a smart portrait and this is really cool. You can do some really cool stuff. I'll show you this on another video, but you can, I can make her aged or make her look younger or I can put a smile on her face. Really cool stuff. We'll play around with that another time. It's a lot of fun, but let's go ahead and colorize it. I'll just click this button and that little blue thing spins because it's going up to the cloud. But look at that. I think it's going to look better than the original color picture and you'll, you'll see. Now, these adjustments right here, like the cyan, red, and blue, yellow, and so on and so forth, these to me are for like if the, if the colors look a little bit off, like say if they're a little too red, you can pull them more into cyan, or if they're too green, you can pull them more into magenta to balance out the color to make it look right, right? Because at the, at the end of the day, you have the final choice of what it looks like, but I find it does a really great job, and look at that. It's, the flesh tones are amazing on that from that black and white image, pretty cool. And just like that, we're done with this one. Now, you do have some choices for output here I didn't show you so if you click this drop down you can put it on the current layer duplicate duplicate layer mass new layer I always put it on a new layer and, a, and you do it as a smart filter and over here you can see the before and the after so you can see your final results and compare and then all we need to do is click OK and we'll go right back into the layer system in Photoshop now remember okay so if we look at this by itself here it looks like that, right? Because that's the way it's interpreting it. And it's combining those two layers together. So if we wanted to send this into a plugin or something like that, we'd have to do a stamp and pull this whole thing together, right? Because if we don't, we'll send that uh, image with holes cut out of it into the plugin. We don't want that. But there's our original. And this is who and who would think that we could take this original change it to black and white and end up with this image i like to think of ways of repurposing filters and tools and so you may want to give that a try take a color image convert it to a black and white image by whatever means you want to gradient maps a good way of doing it to get that extra contrast and then send it out to the uh, neural filter colorize it and bring it back in and see if the result is better so that's another way of using the colorized filter go ahead and try that out on some of your images you may be happy with the results that you come up with two more examples to go let's try this one a landscape and i've already done the black and white conversion we'll go ahead and launch the neural and let's see what kind of result we can get on a landscape image come right to colorize and give it a second or two to go to the cloud and make its determination but look at that pretty cool i think it needs a little more color so i'm going to come to saturation and i'm going to pull up the saturation a little wee bit 
Now, I may want to shift. Let me see what I want to do with this green. Do I want more green in here? That's too much. I probably maybe want less green. Yeah, that looks a little better. I'm going to take the green back a little bit. And so that's exactly what this is for. So you can go ahead and balance out your color. So if you want to give it a little more warmth, you can take your yellow and move it over to the right a little bit. I'll move it even more. So you can come. There we go. So you can play around with this. I might just shift it to the blue side just a wee bit. Something like that. Yeah, that might be too much. Try it right there. Decisions, decisions. Okay, cool. I think it's really good. I'm just going to leave it at that and maybe just give it a little bit more saturation. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We'll let it go at that. And that's all we're going to do with this one. Let's take a look. Here's the before black and white after color. Now let's compare it with the original image. I'm just going to put it on a new layer again. Click OK. We'll be back in Photoshop layers again. And here's the original image. And uh, here it is after changing it to black and white and converting it. It actually, I think, looks a little better, you know. I'm happy with those results. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Let's move on to our final image. This one's going to be a little different. We have this image of a really great looking guy here, like a kind of a fashion look, but I don't like the colors. I think the colors look off, kind of like a pinkish cast or something like that. I'm not real happy with the colors. So what if we can work with the color eyes to correct the color? So again, this would be repurposing the tool. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Let's go ahead and launch the neural filter. And again, it's going to see this as a portrait and take me to Smart Portrait. Don't worry, I'll have another video and we'll get into this. This is fun. But for now, let's go to Colorize and see what kind of result we get on a color image when we click Colorize. Now, it shifts those colors back into the right colors, I think, like the flesh tones and things look better. The jacket, and it's interpreting the jacket to look this color. And um, looks pretty good, except for this nice big uh, stain over his jacket. Not looking real good, but I'll show you how we can take care of that. Now, bear in mind, I'm still learning how to use this uh, filter, but here's what I'm going to do. See right here where it says click to edit focal points? If I hover over the preview here, see I get a little uh, target tool. So this area of the jacket here where the stain is, you know, right here, that like reddish type color stain, I'm going to click right here. And you'll notice I get a color picker tool. Now that jacket is a little bit on the light blue side. I'm going to go ahead and find a color here that represents that blue. You know, come right around here and find a swatch. See that where it says new, that color right there, and click OK. Now watch what happens here. I end up with a very blue jacket. Now if that's what you like, that's cool. But we could come here and see where it says size. We can take the size and start to move this to the left, and watch what happens. Okay, it's kind of pulling back on that a little bit. Let me go a little bit more. Like right there. And now I've kind of blended that in and that looks pretty good. This is a work in progress. I'm learning how to use this, but that does a really good job at kind of getting rid of that red blotch right there. So that's that's nice. Is there anything else I want to do? I might just want to give it still a little bit of saturation here. Let's give it a little bit more. Really cool. Let me come back up here to size and let me just ease this a little more to the left. If I go the whole way to the left, it'll go, everything will go black and white actually. So I don't want to go that far. Right there. I think I got it right there. And if it's too blue, I can take this blue here. Let's play with this. Or I'm, I'm going the wrong way. Let's shift it more to yellow. Yeah, I could shift that a little bit to yellow. I think it helps a little bit. And let's try the cyan. Let's move it a little bit to the red. Okay, it's too much, but a little bit of that red in there, I think will look okay. That looks pretty good. So here's my before. See what I mean? It just looked off color. Now it looks a little more natural. I might have too much color. I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. I'm happy with that. I'll just click OK, and that'll send us back into Photoshop. Here's the before. More of that stylized look. I wasn't real a big fan of it, but maybe for a fashion magazine, it might have been great. But here's the after. And so here we've used the uh, colorized filter. We've repurposed it to correct a color issue. Give that a try. And I think you might be happy with some of the results that you might get. 
And I, again, I'm just learning this filter, how it really works. I'm going to show you one more thing and we'll be done. I went ahead and grabbed one more stock image. And this was a black and white image with a sepia tone. And I thought we'll throw this in the colorize filter and I'll show you something in there that I told you I was going to show you, but I did not show you. And that is the, again, it's a face, so it picks smart portrait, but let's click on colorize and see what it does with this right out of the gate. Pretty cool, right? This colorized filter is amazing. What I want to show you is the uh, profiles. Now, this is great for stylizing images. And this will give us that retro look, you know, like older type images. Let's try some of these. Here's retro high contrast. Then you have this profile intensity. So if that's too strong, you can pull that back. I find they're a little strong at first. So you want to play with this intensity slider. And that looks really nice. Let's try some others. And let's try retro blue brown. Let's give that a little more and see what that looks like. Again, it's a stylization thing, so you might want to play around with this, but I wanted to show this to you too. Here's faded. See, it gives you that faded look. And I kind of like that one. And let me just maybe pull this back a little bit. Maybe right around there. I'm going to click OK. And now you know what that profile is all about. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial today. The colorized filter, really cool stuff. Let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. So we had this image, this image, uh, this one, this one, and this one. So there you go. I was really happy with my results. If you enjoyed my tutorial today, please give it a like. Share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click the bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.